Um, hey guys, good morning. Uh, Welcome to Smartless. <laughs> Listener, uh, we've got Arnett with, I uh, guess, a shirt you're borrowing from uh, Thoreau. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there's no sleeves at all on it. I and um, I guess Jimmy Coco just left too, huh? Because your color's really even. Let me just say this. Okay. Nothing is more insulting to me, virtually nothing, than suggesting that it's a spray tan. Go after yourself. I earned this. <laughs> well, you yeah. earned it by sitting out doing nothing under under the sun with some sort of like a reflective board. What are you doing? Don't you I'm playing golf? Building the stool you're sitting on, or I just got some. Cord. Yeah, can you get your housekeeping shit together before we start the record? What are you doing? I got some cord issues going on. I do too. Um, it's <laughs> messing wrapped, with mine. <laughs> kind of wrapped around my chair. Mine's something. pretty much. You know, you know what I've been doing lately, and this is this is a true story. We went to this big. Uh, I know this is going to air later, but uh, we had a beautiful event last night for Jimmy Buffett. Uh, for my friend Jimmy Buffett, yeah. and uh, I was going to ask you. It was about just, that. it was awesome, and it was really beautiful, and some great speeches and stuff. And a lot of people I know, um, so that part of it was amazing. And it's just, did you talk? Honestly, I, I did not. I, I did a thing at the tribute at the Hollywood Bowl, but um, last night I did. I saw one of the, I saw one of the great speeches last night. That Downey? Uh, no. At the, no, Danny wasn't there. One of the great speeches I've ever seen as a sort of, that was set up as a non-roast and ended up being a roast, and it really blew me away. It was so <laughs> hilarious. I love that. Um, Wait, our, roasted Jimmy after he's passed? Yeah, but but as a tribute to him, a, right. an old friend of his, a guy who's been friends with him for sort of 50, 50 60 years, and it was just, it was so good. Um, and our friend uh, Tom Freston, who's a friend of the podcast, uh, made a great speech well, that You was haven't hilarious. had him on yet. No, I'm going to. He's the most Who's interesting Tom man on the planet. Can't make his deal. Can't. Well, we're looking to because he wants a piece, and he's yeah. just like, oh, and he said, "Send me over the numbers. I want to look and see." <laughs> right. Wait, gross. who's Tom Freston? I met Tom Freston. Used to run Tom, MTV. Tom, Tom Freston. Yeah, he started oh, yes. MTV. Oh yes, I totally know him. He's and, he's awesome. And then, he, he, dude, his stories are. He's just the best. And well, we'll I see. He's, if you can book. I him. think he's writing a book uh, right now, which it'll be. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was just. Uh, it was so, 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 so good. But the reason I brought it up was this. At this thing, midsummer, and so many people, and now this many people come up to me, they go, either, wow, you, you're really tan, or why are yeah. you so tan, right? And people yeah. can't help themselves but well, make a just, personal remark. You and you know what I do? You know what color, I say? And, yeah. And I go, and I go, they'll go, wow, you're so tan. And I'll go, thank you so much. Right. <laughs> and I just take it as a compliment. Well, why, do, it is you, a compliment. You hold color like like uh, like you're from Brazil. I don't I understand know. it. You're yeah, you're out of Toronto. You I know, know, like yeah, why, why do you that? why but, do you but, color but you so guys, well? But, but, but I'm both a, you guys I'm a know walking me. We'll, bounce card. But, yeah, but we we'll, would just we'll, burn immediately. But we, JB, you hold quite a bit of color too. You, let's be honest. When you play golf, yeah, you're you, tan. You, you go. You, but I don't say to you every day, man, you're so tan. When we got when mine's but sorry, Sean, hold it. God, I know. Fuck. We're talking about our color and our golf game. You'll you'll wait. It's my color is it's got a hard V right under the chin, yeah. right from uh -huh. the from yeah. the hot shirts I wear. Yeah. And then and then the little uh you know where the short sleeve ends, whatever that is. That that mm -hmm. there's that tan line. Yeah. And then there's the forehead tan line because I'm wearing a, a a sporty visor. Yeah. Yours yours is like you're outside mowing the lawn with nothing on but like uh, flip flops. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, first you, of all, everybody's Sean. Are people, God are damn people it. okay? <laughs> are people okay with their bones? With you describing your V-neck dad bod tan? <laughs> we just had a, a bone epidemic. But uh, but uh, you know what it is? I spend a lot of time. Like you know me, you guys. I'm I'm not like. Out in the Caribbean, uh, actually, I was last month. <laughs> but I, I'm in the pool. I'm in the pool with the kids. I was in the Caribbean a month ago, so that's part yeah, of it. And we got it. Yeah, Sean, go for, go for Sean. Well, I, I my I have this friend who tans his taint. Oh, oh. yeah, and that's like a thing. Like, Is it really? So, so you like you tan completely naked? Wait, is right. that like bleaching? Um, 
I don't know. No, man. Oh, not, oh, oh, that's where you draw the line. I know about tanning the asshole, but not about bleaching it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what? anything about bleaching. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? <laughs> Fuck. Here we come. This is a great, <laughs> great segue into our high class guest. Sorry Gang, about that. <laughs> our guest this week is enormously accomplished in two completely separate but very public careers and has oh, no. done so while remaining incredibly private and avoiding, for the most part, all the trappings of a Hollywood life. He's an actor and a musician, you two, not a celebrity oh. and a rock star. Okay? Oh, okay. okay. In the movie world, he's received numerous nominations and awards, including an Oscar, a SAG, a Golden Globe. What? He's worked with some of the greatest directors of our time, including Fincher, Malik Stone, Aronofsky, like Villeneuve. As a musician, he's been the front man of, a, of his oh. band for over 26 years. I, I They've sold scary. over 50 million albums and toured the world multiple times. He's quietly been deeply involved in charity and the business world in the few remaining free minutes of, in his life. He's funny. He's easy on the eyes. He's a Capricorn, and I believe he's available. Let's help him out, guys. This is Jared Leto. Leto, I just oh, said. Jared, you did. Jared I called it. Leto. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, man. Hi. Jared, hi. Yeah. You know, hi. I'm very, I'm proud to say Jared and I know each other a little bit. I wish oh, I was closer. Nice. I was going to ask, him, but you know, yeah. he's busy. You know, um, where do we find you? Uh, you find me in Iowa today. Oh, really? On, a, on yeah. uh, are we are acting or or, or musicianing? We just started the U.S. leg of our world tour, which yeah. is called the Seasons World Tour. That's congratulations. And shout out to uh, Tracy in Wisconsin. We were Thank in Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Last two shows, we were in Milwaukee and then in uh, Kadat. Oh, wow. Wait, yeah. what's Kadat? Yeah, what's Kadat? Kadat is a beautiful little town in the middle of nowhere. And uh, today we're in Des Moines. So wait, Des Moines. is Kadat in, in Wisconsin? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Wait, how do you guys how do you guys know each other? Um, what how just sort of crossing paths throughout our uh, start as youngsters in the biz? Is that true? I think so. Vacationing. I think it was the first time on our little trip to to ski town. I, I have no idea, I man. It's think been maybe I don't know. But um, I have been very fond of you for a very long time, Mister. Um, and I'm, I'm so glad to be able to talk to you. Uh, yeah, focused so cool. for an hour here. Yeah, this is awesome. I appreciate it. And this is actually my, um, I, I think it's my first podcast that I've ever done. Oh. It's ours too. Really? Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to fuck it up big time. Listen, yeah. Jared, here's it's the thing with podcasts. Just that try I've done. to if get I, a word in. If I, if I can say anything about podcasts, this is the first time any of us had done one. We started it four years ago mm -hmm. and we have not got any better. Yeah, I would no, say we've true. gotten worse. This I would true. say I, I wore some pajamas. I thought someone might be in That's the me. pajama. Yeah, uh, look at me. Here's, been, here's the stretchy pajamas. pajama pants pajamas. and the fucking hoodie and the shitty T-shirt. Jared, before we jump into how brilliant you are in your mm. music and your acting, what you're so good looking. What do you do for your skin? Good oh, lord, here we go. And this, this is for this Jared, is, or this I, is for everybody? For, <laughs> we're for done Jared. with your skin. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it's kind of amazing. Jared, how old? Are you, how old are you? Are you over fifty? 52. That's what I'm saying. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. You look yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. You guys look great. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I mean, honestly, you could play, and I mean this, and I and I love everybody here, including you, Jerry, because now you're with us. You could play Jason's son, <laughs> and, and I swear you could. <laughs> you could. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, he, well. he, he wears it much better than me. I'm, 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 uh. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, no. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying he could play um, your son. You all right. So, Jared, so you are so you're starting the domestic leg of the of the international tour or world tour. And but this is what what lap around the planet would this be for you guys? It's been, you've done it a few times. Yeah, six or seven hundred probably. No, are no, you no, kidding not six me? or seven hundred laps. No, no, I'm joking. No, but uh, <laughs> we we started, we actually didn't tour for about six years. Um, it was COVID and then we were finishing an album. Um, so the last time we did a world tour was like 2018, did some dates in 2019. Um, but we just, we did a few festivals last year and then we started, uh, this year I was filming, uh, Tron in Vancouver for four wait months. For that. Can't and, wait for that. Can't wait easy. And then I had, um, I had a couple of weeks, uh, where we went to South America to start the tour. And yeah. then after Tron was done, we went off to Europe. And uh, just did seven, eight weeks in Europe, which was wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 Jared. I don't know if you guys saw it. Did, did you start? Did you announce your tour 
Did I see this? Did you climb the Empire State Building yeah. or some shit? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. What the fuck is that about, yeah. man? Yeah. Just start, just go ahead and take 45 minutes to tell us about this. Yeah. Just please. Uh, just a little stunt to, you know, launch the tour. I mean, it's better than just putting it on, you know, No, Twitter. exactly. But yeah. so it's just, just uh, how did, how who, did you not, how did you not vomit? Well, you don't jump ahead. Who comes up with this idea? Let's talk about planning. Yeah. First of all, you're a rock climber. Yeah. So this wasn't out of the blue. Yeah. He's a rock oh, star. No, no. I mean, I've climbed buildings before, and huh? I've always what? been obsessed huh? with. Yeah, I mean, just, just not obviously not like that. But uh, I've always been a, really fascinated by the Empire State Building since I was a kid. You know, <laughs> oh King wow, Kong. you and King Kong, right? <laughs> just yeah, like I gotta get yeah. up there. So yeah. how does that? Uh, all right, as I did a tiny bit of rock climbing with my dad when I was a kid, enough to know that you, it's a certain kind of shoe, it's a boot, it's a friction yeah. friction boot, I think it's called, maybe something like that. Um, no, not at all, but that's okay. This <laughs> is close. Um, but uh, you need you need It's some... called the rock climbing shoe. Yeah, that's oh. it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna write that down. And uh, you need some sort of uh, some something jutting out of a flat surface to be able to kind of get uh, some kind of a, a grip onto a building. Almost by definition, is is flat. So what makes you think you've, you've climbed multiple buildings? Well, how that. how do you get up there? How do you well, do it? Window sills, little you know, if there's kind of a stone feature. Yeah, uh, use those. Um, but but a lot of times it's just the the structure, the features on the building. But were yeah. you hooked into something, or were you just freestyling? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we went to the Empire State Building, and they said no about a hundred times. You asked, kind of. Yeah, we asked, wow. and we had we had to. Uh, it was too big of an undertaking. And there's a huge section of the building that's not climbable. I mean, it is absolutely. <laughs> How about impossible. the whole fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking yeah. about, yeah. man? But it was fun, man. It was it was an incredible adventure, and to sit up there for you know, we actually did did it two days in a row, kind of a day to climb it, another day to film it. Um, what? But it was amazing. What? So uh, wait, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're you're standing on the sidewalk, you're scouting it, right? You got to take yeah. a look at it up close first. And you 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 recognize that there is a path that it is doable. That in other words, that first windowsill you can literally reach and start your climb. I mean, stuff like that. I just yeah. The first step. Yeah, you, and that, you, I was just you, gonna you, say the first. Step. Yeah, yeah. The first step is 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 getting them to say yes, getting permits to be able to do it. Um, you but know, they didn't, and then right. You know, no, they did. Oh, uh, because I, I think you know what their big concern actually was was it necessarily you falling me off? falling? No, it was <laughs> me falling on top of somebody and killing somebody. Oh, on the street. yeah, 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 that right. makes sense. Um, but I had some climber friends of mine that looked at it. Uh, a guy named Alex Honnold from Free Solo uh, took yeah. a look at doing oh, that yeah, at one point, and had decided really that the first section of it was probably not climbable unless you know you, you wanted to die. Uh, but the only way that I was able to do it was to get permission to get permits, um, and I had to be roped up for the sections that I climbed, the sections that were climbable. Um, but it was amazing. Wait, so yeah. then you were going to free climb it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's look, there's there's a lot of terminology that gets confusing with climbing, but yeah, I had to be roped up while I climbed uh, the Empire State wow. Building. Wow. Had I not, I would be dead um, because mm -hmm. I did fall. Um, oh, and, okay. Uh, you know, it's it's a very very difficult climb. It's not something no. that you can just kind of do without a rope. Yeah, Jared, do you know that every night? And this is true, Jason. You'll attest to this. Every single night, you get roped up, right? You don't <laughs> smoke it. I guess you you, you chew it. Yeah, but you I, get it, you get a head yeah. full of rope every night. Yeah, sure. Wait a second. So, Jared, Jared, I've seen a lot of those. I loved all those like uh, free solo and yeah, all the, one, the other one about. Um, the guys who climbed in, in Tibet, all those uh, uh, those amazing Sherpas, you know, that story, they climbed all those peaks. Uh, what was that one? They climbed like the seven peaks, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was called something like that. Yes, yeah, I mean, but, 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 but sort of that, the, the kind of the, 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 the one uh, consistent thing about all of them was that they just had this, that thing that I don't think most people have, which I guess you have, which is that the, 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 the sort of they're missing that thing. Of having fear that most of us have, which yeah. that I have, you know, I start to get weak. My knees get weak when I climb a ladder uh, that's mm -hmm. above ten feet. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, man. If yeah. I fall, I'm going to die. Right. Yeah. And would do, so, my question is for you is because it, all those people seem to have it, and you have it. Did you always have that, or did you kind of did it just over time develop? 
No, I, I still get, uh, yeah, I, I, I experience fear when I'm climbing all the time. I mean, that's what keeps you alive. But uh, I climb with Alex quite a bit. He's oh, a good wow. friend. I climb with uh, Jimmy Chin, who's about mm. to go to, uh, I think he's going to ski down Everest or something crazy. No way. But, uh, but yeah, these, these, these guys, uh, you know, they're professionals. I'm an amateur. Uh, you know, I do this for fun. It's a hobby um, for me. But there, there are a lot of times you have to negotiate with fear. You have to have a conversation with yourself. And it, it's a fascinating thing because you're... I've never heard people talk about death more than friends of mine that are climbing all the time. You know, it's a comedy. Right. You're really close to death. And I think mm -hmm. in a way you're really also maybe a bit closer to life. Mm -hmm. um, right. I, I, I free dive as well. And, you know, that's something where you're always having a conversation with yourself about uh, negotiating your limits, negotiating fear. Um, but I don't know. I love it. I think it's really fun. At, at the end of the day, it's just fun. Is there any time that you actually be got really close to that that moment of death oh, yeah like oh yeah yeah i was climbing with alex and uh and red rock where i live i live in nevada now by the way i moved there during covid oh wow um and i lived 10 minutes from some of the best rock climbing in the world and i was out there climbing with him one day and my rope got cut oh my god Oof. and i was on about, a rock i was about yeah 600 feet up about to, I was climbing an overhang about 600 feet uh, off the ground. And oh. I knew I was going to fall, which is actually, you know, pretty normal in climbing. You, you sometimes, you fall a couple of times and that's how you learn. That's how you get better. That's how you kind of make uh -huh. it through. And just, and for Tracy, like the, 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 you fall, but you don't fall to the ground because you've got a, uh, a carabiner into the rock at some sort of place. So you're only falling that, that distance, which is maybe what, 20 feet, something like that. Exactly. Sometimes it could be 50 feet. It could yeah. be two feet. Uh, it really depends on, on, on the situation. But Alex was ahead of me and he was placing the gear. I took a fall. I swung out over the 600 foot abyss. <sighs> And Jeez. as I was swinging, I felt the rope go pop, 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 pop. No and way. And I looked up and I could see it start to get core shot at the top. Oh I saw God. the white innards of the rope oh, pop out. No. And, and I knew in those few seconds, milliseconds maybe, that I was probably going to die. And if, if I didn't grab a hold of the wall when I swung back in, I was, that was it. So I swung back into the wall and I went to grab it at the last minute. Oh, I lost it and I swung out again and I yelled, oh, lower me to Alex. And fortunately, he heard me. Uh, it was a very windy day and he was about 100 feet above me uh, on top of this mountain because he couldn't see me. I was on the overhang. And as I said, uh, yelled, lower me, he lowered. So the next time that the rope got cut, it was in a different spot. And oh, that time God. I managed to make it on the wall and uh, he figured out how to get down because he's superhuman. And we had to cut the rope and kind of negotiate our way down the mountain. But it was, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty Shit. fun. Yeah. And dude, then you're like, dude, wow. I would have been, first of all, all the clothing I was wearing would have to be thrown out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Just, it would be, I would be, my pa pants would be filled with defecate. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, one time, what was the thing, Sean, you said at the Grove, you, you and Scotty parked on P4, and you ended yeah. up taking the stairs all the way down, right, because the elevator's broken, what were you yeah, saying? Yeah, that's right, yeah, that was my scariest moment. That was the story. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, at the end of it, Alex is like, you want to do it again? I was like, you're out of your fucking mind. Right? Yeah, right. Fuck me, man. Right? Yeah. And we will be right back. And now, back to the show. But Jared, talk to me about how you what what is that um, the, what is that conversation with yourself when you when you negotiate uh, with yourself about fear? Because I'm sure it's not just exclusive to rock climbing. It's it's about um, you know getting up in front of thousands and thousands of people, um, performing with with Thirty Seconds to Mars, or taking on some of these incredibly ambitious roles, which you in, you pull off like no one's business. Um, what is that? Uh, how is, I mean, I know it's a deeply personal conversation people have with themselves about kind of gearing up for, for stuff and asking yourself to give what you got. Um, but, you know, give us as much as you're comfortable giving about, because you, you clearly have a lot of, um, it's not, it's not confidence. It's just, uh, it's, uh, well, you tell me what it is because you, you have it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, thank you. I, I appreciate it, but I think you guys do that all the time. I mean, some of the it's scariest different. stuff. It's different. You know what? You know what can 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 uh, scare me more than a lot of things is having to speak in front of a lot of people. Yeah, I don't do Still. that well. Same up on stage Still. with a spotlight, yeah, as same. myself with a microphone. And it's bizarre because I'm it. on stage most nights of the week, as you are as well. And you know, even this is a public stage. It's you know, so that that can always, you know, when you're just up there and, and it's you and your words, that can be a little intimidating. But um, I don't know. I I think you know, there's an inevitability. Like when I'm on tour, you have to go on stage. And right. the weird thing about being, maybe you guys have felt this as well. Um, I feel more comfortable on stage than I do sitting here talking to you, or I would talking to a person at dinner. Like uh-huh. I feel what once the show because is that's begun, a character maybe no 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 no, no, no. Le- lead man no no the music is the, being on stage is a total opposite it's the revelation of oneself it's mm-hmm. showing and sharing who you really are uh huh uh-huh. you know what that's it's, where I, yeah no really quick I was just gonna say at my wedding to Scotty my husband there was like ten people at our wedding yeah. we were gonna do like a thousand and my opening in my wedding vows I said I feel um, incredibly comfortable in front of thousands of people or one person but this is right in the middle of that right. and that's where i feel the worst uh, yeah yeah. Uh, yeah you know yeah sometimes i'm i have acoustic guitar i'm sitting there in the middle of an arena or somewhere and it just feels terrifying you know, no it no? feels absolutely amazing it's so yeah, comfortable yeah. it's so um i'm totally at peace and uh it's a magical thing uh, by the way we're all this similar ages and you know, I have to say, I was talking to my brother, and um, you know, my br- my brother's a massive fan of the show. Oh the no, way. I know, I know your brother's a avid listener. He's been telling me Hello, from Shannon. the very beginning, you gotta listen to the show. You gotta <laughs> listen. <laughs> Texting me all the time. Oh my God, this happened on the show. It's like, okay, I'm gonna listen to the goddamn <laughs> show. <laughs> uh, Wait, Jared, you know that I know Shannon. We have mutual friends. I know Shannon. Oh, nice. He's a, he's yeah, a great he's the guy. Best. He's, he's a great guy. For people that don't know that are listening, he's the better half of Thirty Seconds to Mars, and yeah, we've right. been doing the band together since we so were kids. So cool. That's so yeah, great. And, you know, to, to be 52 at this point. And to be on the t- on on the road with your brother, yeah. Oh. Like, there's not a night that goes by where I don't look at him and and just you know share a moment of gratitude. How lucky we are! To be. I want to come so back nice. to that, but bef- but before That's we leave so this awesome. thing, um, is it, it, it just so I it sort of close the loop on it? It's it's it, it sounds like what you're saying is there's there's a there's a belief in yourself that you find at the most critical moments that fuels you through something that might be insurmountable to some others that might not have that level of belief that your ability to go through something that that might be really super challenging is 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 that what it is I'm of the thinking that I actually don't have anything special to mm. offer I really what? believe that everyone could basically do anything that I do yeah. anytime they want to. It's it's a matter of a little bit of faith and a lot of hard work. That's how I look at it. I think yeah. everybody could. But what's the faith? I guess that that's the part. Is it, it's faith in yourself, right? It's belief that you can yeah. get it done and that you 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 have the opportunity to make yourself proud, and you're probably not going to let yourself down. And and the people around you too, you know, right? Uh, the people around you that that's a big driver for me is to kind of uh, to make sure I don't let anyone down, yeah. um, whether I'm working on a film or I'm on stage. And you know, the the great thing that I found out about being on tour, and being on stage, is like I'm not there for me. Mm. I'm there mm. for the audience and for my brother, and I am in service every night to make sure the person that. Uh, worked their ass off to buy a concert ticket, which aren't yeah. cheap these days, by right. the way, has a night that they're never going to forget. Yeah. And I'm I'm in search of that yeah. every night, all night. And that's a lucky place It's interesting to be. you say that. And, yeah, yeah. and I think it's... I also, I also have a similar thought process, which is that there are a thousand people who can do what I do. And um, I think about it all the time. And I think, Might be a bigger number. It, <laughs> and, and, but, but sorry, I'm going to cut you but, off. Oh, sorry, within 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 the greater Los Angeles area at any given time. <laughs> sorry to uh, make it. It's true. <laughs> 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 
sorry, Will. Finish your point. That was, that was rude. It was fucking no, no, rude. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, um, <laughs> listen, I get it. You're hungry. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so, so. Uh, but what I wanted to know about was when you say it's interesting when you said like you don't want to disappoint anybody, or you want to let anybody down, and when you're on tour and you're on stage is that your brother is that shannon or when you're working on a film is that all the people around you is that the people at home is that an idea a, a sort of a general idea of letting people down like is that something you've always had no i think it's all of the above um and you know i don't carry that with me as a burden i kind of for me that's fuel yeah. for the fire mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um you know i i don't know Maybe you guys feel this way too, but when I'm on set, I feel like it's my job to try and be one of the hardest working people on the set. Yeah, it's my job to Amen. absolutely deliver every single time that I come to set. Of course, you're going to fail, but that's the goal. Yeah, to be over prepared, to know my lines, to know your lines, to know to have a thousand ideas uh, to bring to the table, and to do and to really just to die for it. Yeah. Um, and to also try to be the kindest person that I can be every yeah. single day and to be supportive and be a good partner. Like those are the simple things uh, mm -hmm. that, that kind of continue to get me through it. But when you're as prepared as you are, like you just described, that yeah. eliminates fear. That's true. I, it's like it can yeah, help, that's, right? that's very well said. I think preparation is um, definitely a confidence builder and, yeah. you know, sometimes if I haven't been on tour for a long time, I'm like, and we have a huge show and there's a ton of people out there and I'm like, oh my God, how do I, what do I do? And then you get out there and you just, your it body works. remembers. Right. You know? All of this sounds like a really, really, uh, really good work ethic and a, and a deep sense of discipline um, and focus. Uh, did you have that as a young kid? Was that something that you that your mom taught you? Um, uh, was it, did you discover it in school or you just kind of come out of the box with it? My mom, yeah. My mom was, and is a great teacher. Yeah. You know, she's, um, in a large part, I dedicated my Oscar speech to my mother. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I had an opportunity. I always think, like, by the way, I never thought that I would win a single award in my entire life. Right. Those are the people and, that win. It's much deserved. Never, 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 never would happen to me. Never, ever. So I was like, well, I'm going to use this as an opportunity um, to to really thank the people uh, in my life that have that have inspired and encouraged me. And and you know, first and foremost, that's my mom. And my mom, she was a single mom. We yep. grew up really poor. Um, and you know, like food Where stamp did you grow poor. Up? Uh, I, I was born in Louisiana, as was my brother. And you know, my mother was high school dropout but put herself um, back through school with two kids, single wow. mom, um, and, and got a nursing degree. Wow, and really real. worked wow. and fought really hard to make a better life for herself and her kids. And you watched that, you kids. observed that. Yeah. And I yeah. saw that, and I saw her do, if there was a shift that came up, she would take that. I saw her do those extra, I don't know, um, but they were these really long shifts, at least 12 hours, uh, and then she would do night shifts and I saw her work and I saw her dedication and I watched her educate herself. I watched her um, and it taught me a lot. Um, so, and she was always very creative um, and, and, and really kind of broke the mold in her family. Yeah. Um, so that, that was a big lesson for me. All right, so you leave Louisiana. Where do you go from there? Where does, where, where does, the, where does the acting and the music bug start to bite you? Yeah. Well, I was in art school. And studying to be a painter. Oh, nice. Um, Good yeah, Lord, there's yeah. nothing you can't do. It was like no. after a, 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 a stint kind of, it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm negotiating in my head things that I want to talk about or not because yeah. I actually don't talk about a lot of this stuff. Um, we appreciate uh, that, the fact that you're... But it's yeah. something in my life too, I'm like, I'm negotiating as well of like, know. you know, how how do you, you know, what do you share, what do you not? And as you, yeah, as what do you keep to older, yourself? Yeah. yeah, and I've been less precious about it. there's nothing fun about a safe interview, I've always yeah. felt. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know, you want to share things, and, you know, it's beautiful to share can, things. Well, can I, can I say this? Then maybe this will prime you yeah. a little bit. So I, 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 I've been joking recently that I know, I've been saying to people, for a guy who's a loudmouth know-it-all, me, uh, I know embarrassingly little about art. 
and it's been like this blind spot that I've had my whole life. And I, and I kind of started to own it recently. And as from the moment I started saying that, I've started yeah. meeting all these artists, yeah. painters. I met three, I've met three new painters in the last 24 hours alone who have mm. revealed to me, oh, I'm a painter. And so I've been talking, and I've been reading this book about the Kooning. I'm boring these guys about, but I'm reading this book about, and it's been, it's kind of like now, because I've been putting it out there, it's been coming. And I said to Alessandra, my partner, this morning, we rode our bikes down to the beach. I'm out here in Long Island, rode my bike down to the beach, and I said, I can't believe I'm saying this. I think I'm going to start painting. Yeah, I, I get it. I, was, I love and, that. And, and I'm embarrassed because I feel like a fucking cliche. And I'm I like, I don't give a shit. I right? love it. I think it's I great. fucking feel it. And yeah. I don't know anything. I really don't. I'm a fucking novice of novices. But I feel really yeah. uh, connected to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Do you it. still do it, Jared? You know, I don't paint that much. I draw sometimes and I put a lot of my creative energy. And by the way, I think that's one of the important things in life is to keep learning, to keep... I always say I love to be the dumbest guy in the room. Yeah. yeah, and that's yeah. a fascinating room to be in. And uh, I wish Sean would do a would lot say of that. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and fortunately, I have the opportunity to do that quite a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, same here. Same. But I no, too. I think it's great to continue to learn to do new things, and yeah. uh, you know, just to be to be a beginner. Um, mm. Again, do you get and, do you get knee deep in the artwork for the albums and stuff like that? Oh, in artwork. Do, yeah, too much probably. Yeah, I'm the guy that makes like a thousand different album covers. And, but I think, uh, but yeah, but album yeah. artwork is is always yeah. consistently been like to me like really cool or like rock uh, concert T-shirt designs and all that yeah. kind. Of, I'm a big yeah. fucking Radiohead. I, I've been you know, doing that like every three days. We're doing a new T-shirt design, and I mean it's something. It's a consistent thing, and I love that. Uh, but with the album artwork, I did a thousand different covers, and then you know what I did, I. I, I did this little art project where I was taking a photo of the sky every day, right? Mm. And, uh, you know, after about three months, it gets really annoying, by the way, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, uh, I'd, be, my, I'd say to my assistant, I'd be like, can you just grab that photo today? <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. I'm too busy. It and wasn't from so the same simple. place every no, day, right? No, it was but just... it's anywhere you are. It's just right. like, it's, oh, I forgot. And then you try to make yeah, up yeah. for it. But anyway, I had hundreds of photos of these skies and I thought, oh, maybe that's an album cover. So I did 10 different album covers, just basically cell phone pictures of the sky. And that ended up being kind of the, 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 the basis of our artwork for our new album. That's cool. Uh, which is, is, is called It's the End of the World, But It's a Beautiful Day. So it ended yeah. up being a But nice by the way, Sean, you got accused. Of, didn't you have hundreds of photos of these guys? No, he said skies. He said skies. Oh, got it. Of skies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got I would, it. I would take Sorry. photos of it. Sorry. And then I'd hear a knock on my door. Sorry. The my hearing is weird. so bad. <laughs> my hearing is so bad. Jared, you reminded oh, me of the, like... It's oh, mine really, was of the same guy. <laughs> you, you reminded me of this really cool documentary I read about you directed where you, 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 you simultaneously filmed uh, a day in the life of 50 different... of the 50 different states... Is that, do I, am I describing yeah, that? I did something called The Day in the Life of America. Our album, our previous album in 2018 was called America. Yeah. Uh, and it was that time when the world was kind of getting a little, a little wild. It still hasn't recovered, I think. I was going to say. But specifically America. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I um, was inspired by a book that I had when I was a kid, National Geographic, where they took photos in every state on a single day. So yeah. we sent camera crews. We actually had 92 crews all wow. over the country. What? Uh, in every state, in Puerto Rico and as well in Alaska. And, and we made this documentary about the a, a kind of one day. And it was fascinating. We had the birth of a child. We had someone pass away on mm -hmm. camera. I mean, it was like, it was a really, we saw it all. Um, and it was on 4th of July, so we had all the fireworks. Oh, no way. Too. That's cool. Yeah. How do you like that? How do you like, um, how do you like, directing and then directing uh, narrative versus documentary. Uh, I, I know you do a lot of producing too. Is that, are those areas that you're, you're looking to, to challenge yourself on as well? Well, I, I started off and I, I was a painter in, in art school. And then yeah. I took photography class and I got obsessed. I'd be in the dark room, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever done that, but that's a really fun thing to do to mm. kind of shoot and develop your... Go ahead, Will. That's a great tee up for you, for uh, Sean. No, no, no. In a dark what? room? Uh, no. hundred, hundred, Nothing yet? Hundreds of these guys in a dark yeah. room? Yeah. I, Sean, I keep, You I keep work on it and come back and interrupt them. But wait, wait, wait. Jared, Jared, I want to talk... I want to know about you becoming a painter. Like when... 
yeah. what, what, what was that? Like, well, I grew up around. My mom was, you know, I had a hippie mom, and yeah. she had a lot of really creative friends. And um, I always thought that I would either be a painter, or, I don't know. My dad was a p painter and a photographer, for real. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So I, I love both those things. And, <laughs> he was, uh, really? No, it's, it's awesome. Uh, my mom is a great photographer, and I grew up around seeing her photos, and she taught me a lot about photography when I was a kid. Um, so uh, one day I was, the, this school had like a performing arts section, to it and I would go over and watch the actors and I always thought man that is terrifying mm -hmm. they are so brave what mm -hmm. they're doing running around out there on stage and I didn't understand any of it I was like this is just insane but I asked the school um, um, I started taking a film class like a uh, film as as a, a kind of you know fine art not not like film as cinema as Hollywood movies um, so I fell in love with that and, you know. Just like film shoot, history, get a, you'd, you'd like watch classics. No, and, no, we would go, they had like Bolex cameras that you'd yeah. rent oh, wow. and you'd shoot. Filmmaking. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you'd shoot film, um, yeah, cool. black and white film, and then you'd, you'd have to send it away get, to get developed and we would we would edit using razor blades and tape. Yeah. And uh, wow. I mean, it, there wasn't a single computer. I remember the first computer that came in to that art school was a Macintosh and yeah. nobody used it. You know, it just sat in the corner. The Apple II. Um, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I, I was, I was studying painting. I fell in love with photography. I took a film class. I switched my major to film. And then I asked the school to create a class for directors about acting. And I bothered them. I went there maybe 200 times and the lady kind of looked at me frustrated one day and says you know what i admire your persistence <laughs> and she like you know she just what like, does that mean directors for acting um acting for directors sorry acting for directors gotcha ah, acting yeah, for yeah. directors so i yeah. thought like okay i'm studying film even though it was the kind of arty farty fine art film yeah right but we should understand what acting is Right. But I had this little secret. I was, I thought, mm, this is interesting. Yeah. yeah, and it got it got more attention in your mind than than directing. Well, I so we they created the class after I bugged them, and there was like I don't know, maybe four or five people. We were doing you know acting like animals and yeah. doing all these experiments, and you know I, I I don't know how much I learned in that class, but um, shortly after that, I I had dropped out of college. I ended up in California to pursue acting, music, and acting. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, that's it's my life really story. it's really cool <laughs> how you've been able to keep but it's it's just like you know as I said sort of in my crappy intro that you know you've you've been incredibly successful in both of these careers yeah. like enormously successful yep. yet you've managed to not you know lean in and take take the bait and and eat the junk food that that propels that kind of success and notoriety into celebrityness if that's a word and it's not and it's just not <laughs> well you we we all fail a lot right i mean i always say i fail more than anybody that i know i fail all the well time. you're just getting to know me you know yeah but i mean like but to jason's yeah. point it's like um you don't get sucked into that. Is that a conscious decision? Do you say no to a lot of things because you like to stay private? Or do you say no because you don't want to deal with it? I mean, well, or it's I, just not you. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm actually an introvert. And, yeah, me too. Um, which is bizarre because yeah. of my choices out there uh, as far as work goes. Yeah, you're because you're a movie star and you're in a rock band. It doesn't seem like a per perfect spot for an introvert to live. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it's a strange thing, but you know, when I'm done with a show, um, yeah. I literally you just leave get quiet. The show, yeah. yeah, I go to the 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 hotel room, get food, and you know, turn on yeah. Netflix, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Dunzo, Dunzo, Washington. Uh -huh. Yeah. Wow. We'll be right back. And back to the show. Um, what is, uh, what do you, uh, aside from that sort of that, that, that decompression routine of just kind of getting quiet, getting by yourself, watching little TV, is there anything else that you can really rely on that gets you 
to your to your small self and is like is it reading is it is there like a, a video game that you play or whatever an app on the phone or like from you know willie and i we play like freaking word games on the app sometime on the phone and it, like you have some, golf sometimes gets us uh you know quiet mm-hmm. yeah for me i have um work i love yeah. to work that's my favorite thing in the world to do, I, I love to work, work and work some more. And if I have some time, I like to climb. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I like to free dive, which I just started a couple of years ago. What's free? Yeah, I want to talk about yeah. that. Free dive off is, a cliff is that, into is the that ocean. Like the big like, blue, like that Luc Besson uh, film. Yeah, Le Grand Bleu. Yeah. Le Grand Bleu. Ah, but c'est, c'est incroyable. Uh, c'est incroyable. Le, one cigarette. Wow. Uh, the, oui. Uh, well, I take uh, one. Uh, no, I see my mistress. I have a coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> take one to, uh, I don't know. And uh, this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cuckoo. Uh, so, wait, so this uh, is this every is diving French person, with... Sean. Every French person that come in the room, like sort of like saying hi, and they'll go cuckoo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> why? Cuckoo. Why is that? I just I had this woman who I worked with, and I was living in the south of France, and I could hear from the room. <laughs> Cuckoo! Oh, shut the fuck! Why cuckoo? Mon Dieu, arrête avec tout ça. Tu m'énerves, hein? Why do they say cuckoo? It's like uh, the Englishman with the pip pip, right? Yeah, oh, okay. it's just kind of like a you. It's almost like a you who, but it's like uh, you know. Uh, uh, but wait, so this is diving without oxygen, yeah. without? Yeah, it's not. A lot of people, when you say free dive, a lot of people think jumping off of cliffs. Oh, okay, right, uh, right. like yeah, me. It's not. You know, free diving is either people focus on depth. Um, people focus on time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's static diving. There's free diving. What's the kind of what, what kind of depths are we talking about right now? I like to dive through caves. That's my oh, thing. God, oh, oh, that's nightmare. Willie's, but it's not a, with a tank, right? With no so tank. there's no way out, Will. Um, but again, no, I'm a oh. beginner. I'm a beginner rock climber. I'm a beginner uh, free diver. Yeah, I'm definitely well, your an amateur. beginning ass just went up the Empire State Building and you're diving in caves. So yeah, it's, dude, you're doing okay. So, I'm doing. Yeah, okay. How I'm long alive. can you stay under? Uh, you can um, stay under. Let, let me guess. Really let me guess. Let me guess. Time. Okay, yeah. but let me let, let me guess how long you can hold your breath. And, okay. and I know this yeah. oversimplifies things. It dumbs sure. it down for us idiots. Sure. Um, yeah. I'll bet that you can get to three minutes pretty easily. Uh, Will, uh, Sean, do you have, a, have any guesses? I was just thinking about how long I can get, stay under propofol, uh, right. like, an, like an hour. <laughs> or, when you, or when you choke yourself out, how long you can stay before? <laughs> before the... When I get the when I get my belt around the uh, the top of the door, Jim. <laughs> when I'm trying to just when I'm trying to no, squeeze uh, one so, out. I'm going to say the oh, what, what's the what's the record? No, because I saw wait, like something. I'm going to say three and a half. I'm going to say three and a half minutes, Jared. Uh, that's my Jason said three. I'm going to say four. I'll say four. Jared? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, three minutes for sure, four minutes for sure. No um, way. So it goes but longer. The, oh, people go a lot longer. That's not a lot for, that's not, it's that it's not impressive at all in the world of right. freediving. That is a beginner. Wow. Um, now are there, uh, okay, so where are the, where, where are the great caves? Um, in Mallorca, Sardinia, yeah. um, Corsica, all the beautiful places. Uh I just was in Greece. There was some good stuff there. Um, but I, I focus on depth and I focus on caves. Uh, I've been, the deepest I've gone is 108 oh, feet. Jesus Christ. Well, um, you need 10 minutes to reacclimate or whatever as you come back up, don't no, you? No, you don't have to. No. That's really? only with scuba diving. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you yeah. just use your, yeah. your lungs and that's it. He doesn't know anything. Jesus, Jared, yeah. Jared, why don't you just like take up reading men or something? Why are you <laughs> yeah. jumping off cliffs or swimming in the cliffs? Like, why don't you like, just get involved with the crown? You know, there's a bunch of seasons you can watch. Um, <laughs> you know, there, there are a lot of shows I've never seen that I've been waiting to see. Uh, what do you want to see? What's the, what do you want to well, see that I've you feel like you missed out? What was the uh, Game of Thrones? I never saw. It's really right. I never saw, I saw that, the I never first saw season. By the way, I never saw The Simpsons. I never Me saw too. Family Guy. Oh. I never saw too. South Park. Me too. But I did see uh, Ozark, and I would annoyingly oh, let's spend email some time on uh, this. Jason uh, often with um, you know thoughts on the plot developments and yeah, the characters sure. and how much I love the show and just you know kind of fawning. When it's, it's them, but often. when you give me notes, I'd remind them we're locked. Picture is yeah. locked, so let's <laughs> right. keep it to compliments. Um, um, I have a question yeah, though. For, nice. I have a question for all three of you because you're all um, wonderfully sober, 
Mm-hmm. But do you think you do these these climbings, these divings, these the art, like all these things because they take the place? It's a rush that takes the place of a drug. No, I don't think so. I no? I find mm-hmm. them to be very peaceful when I climb and when I dive. I okay, mean, you're really good. you're you're you you have to remain peaceful if you're hundred feet under the water. You know, sometimes what's wild is you have this. You do have a conversation about death with yourself mm-hmm. uh, because it's scary um, sometimes. Um, and then you have these moments of peace that are just outstanding. You know? It's almost they, like they're... drugs sometimes or alcohol, at least for me, was sort of um, the fun of kind of escaping from being inside myself and kind of, mm. uh, you know, adding a little of this and adding a little of that and, and, and going to sort of a different version of myself. Whereas uh, it sounds like your experience is, is the opposite arrow and it's just a real internal thing. And well, it, it compels you to, into the moment. Yeah. Being on stage, mm. being mm. underwater, climbing a rock, that you have to be present. You don't have, you have to a be choice. so present, and you're not thinking about your phone. You're not thinking about your job, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You're not thinking about any of that. You're thinking mm-hmm. about what's right in front of you. So it's yeah. it's incredibly simple and um, and primal, I think, in some ways. Yeah, I, I should note that I don't think I've been wonderfully sober. I think I've I've had a few missteps over the years, uh, definitely. And it's but always okay. for me, it's been a process. No, of course, part it's of okay. It. Yeah. It's been it's been a process for me, and and or as we say in Canada, a process. Sure. But uh, but we <laughs> but I've uh, but you know you get to know yourself a little bit better, and I do find those things. Uh, it is it's a combination of what Jared said, and what Jason said, which is for me is about being present and being okay with being present and and trying to accept where I am. And it's it's all about right. It's all about powerlessness and all that sort of stuff, and realizing it and and being and realizing where you are and where you sit in the world. I don't know about you guys. I've thought a. I, uh, and not to a, to a to a crazy degree, but I've been thinking a lot more about my mortality. Yeah, uh, the last course. few years We're on the backside. And, yeah, and I think and I think about. I was saying last night. I went. I was Jared. You might have heard me waxing on about this memorial I went to, and and I was like thinking about. We all are here for this one visit. We're not yeah. making another trip. We got five minutes, right? Left. We're we're on this. We're on, and so it better be good, and we better be oh. happy. And I'm just, and we're all just trying to figure out how to get through Absolutely. it the best way. I think I'm coming other. back. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to come back as Jared. Um, yeah, uh, I know, Jared. Uh, it would be right? pretty good. <laughs> but wait, Jared, I have two questions really fast. One is about Tron because mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan. Of the yeah, franchise. he's a big sci-fi fan. Are, oh, yeah. are you as well, Jared? Is that is that what brought you to this? Super fan. Really? Oh, wow, super, yeah. Super, I've seen super, super, super fan. So many Tron times. and Blade Runner were the two movies oh. that really yeah. changed my life as and a kid. And now you've been in both. Yeah, bizarre. So yeah. I know I'm, so cool. I'm living in my simulation over here for sure. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, what can you but, tell us about Tron without uh, uh, revealing? Well, uh, we, we, we've been developing it for almost 10 years. Yeah. Um, wow. And it's called Tron Ares. And is it pick about, up right where the last one left off or no? Uh, in a way, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. So um yeah, I'm super excited. And for me, like one of one of the highlights was working with Jeff Bridges. I was just gonna yes. say, any conversations yeah. with him on this one? Oh God, he's just the best. Oh yeah. my god. I had one take where I had to literally I had to say cut. And they were like, what's wrong? Something I said, I was like, no, I just can't stop fucking smiling. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I love that guy. He's every, you know, it's money back guarantee. That motherfucker gives you everything I you ever wanted. All the time. You know? the best. Uh, but I think it's a great idea. And correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it where the Tron world gets transferred into the real world? Yeah. It's kind yeah, of the opposite. It's such a great idea. A little idea. bit of the Terminator thing where, where the, the, oh, the cool. that technology comes out into Earth. And oh, I like that. Here. So yeah. smart. I like that. That, that, Yeah, it puts it in context that we can kind of understand a little bit better, maybe too. For like, Um, and then tell me because I love uh, because I do a lot of theater. I love horror stories about live shows, and I know you do a lot of live shows. Was there any kind of crazy like fan interaction? Somebody rushed the stage, and every night completely (laughs) lost the lyrics. Every night, every night we just played. I mean, the show in Kadat was incredible. I mean, I fell in love with like the entire audience. It was the craziest group of like shit kicking awesome Americans you've ever yeah. seen in your life. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. insane. There are two people dressed like Beetlejuice. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, another guy came. I literally brought a guy 
uh, on stage who is wearing a, a was it an American flag speedo or was it just a, a, a yeah an American flag speedo? <laughs> That's where um, it went, Will. <laughs> yeah. So, but let me tell you, I was just like I, I was smiling the whole time. I'm That's so great. grateful to be in front of these people and and it was just incredible so yeah i've had the worst things happen um and uh and the and the most amazing we we every night there's a you know catastrophe of some right. kind like the mic goes out you fall over and right yeah you're well, playing all these I, major major cities around the world but i also see here you got you got a couple sold out shows coming up in kazakhstan and, and in azerbaijan as what? well what like, yeah. uh, what's it wait, like? Wait, 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 what? Yeah, what's yeah. it like touring all these incredible corners of the earth? Do you get out and like visit the local markets? And do you have time to 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 plant for a day or two? Or are you on to the next place always? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, even yesterday, I I bought a bicycle a couple of days ago in Wisconsin. So we just take that out after the show, before the show, on the day yeah. off, explore the cities. Explore. And, wow. Yeah, and, you know, this this uh, summer we were in Paris and in London, but yeah. we're also in Poland and we're in right. Italy and then we're uh, <sighs> headed to Sweden and to Kazakhstan. It's just incredible. Do you have a thing that is a constant in each one of these cities that you like to check out, whether it be the food or the museums or the churches or the, or the, or the whatever, that you just I have to see their version of? No, I of think, you know what I'd love to do? when I'm on tour is I love to walk around the cities and kind of get away from the tourist areas and walk through like residential areas yeah, and yeah, see yeah. how people are living. I find that's a really good way to feel the culture of a specific yeah. place. But the nice thing is it's not going to Poland for the first time. It's going for like the 10th time, the 15th mm -hmm. time, because you find you go back to that restaurant that you found you know, seven times ago, you yeah. you have a connection with the people and the place and the food. Yeah, I want to see you play. It, 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 you, do you have any plans to come through LA anytime soon? Yeah, you know, we are. We didn't um, put an LA date on this tour. Yeah, um, strategically, we actually are going to play a show next year, which is the twentieth anniversary of our breakthrough album, which was called "A Beautiful Lie." Yeah, uh, and we are going to play a show in Los Angeles to celebrate that. Oh, that's, that's great. next year. Great. That's great. That's next year. Yeah. And do you have a, do you have a venue picked yet? I mean, are we making news? You know, we're making news, but it'll either be a Hollywood Bowl or yeah. a Forum yeah. or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. great. So. I want to see that. Jared, is there? You've done so many things. Is there something you look at other people doing that you won't do? That you're like, oh, I, I, I dive, I climb, I do movies, I play in front of millions of people. You know what? Yeah, theater. <laughs> oh, really? Theater. Uh, theater. God, you would, you'd be so good oh, on you'd stage. Be well, you know, I'm going to tell you why, and it's, yeah. and it's, and I, because I have so much respect for it, and yeah. I know how hard it is because I've had so many friends do it that um, I just feel like uh, I'd rather enjoy that than be a part of it. Um, I'm also on stage a lot as it is, so I don't have maybe the same itch that other people may have to kind of perform live because I'm right. getting pretty satisfied on that other yeah. side of it. But man, what I'm going to make a prediction that you're going to do a, you're going to do a, a, a play in the next five years and you're going to win a Tony <laughs> just like Sweet Shawnee Hayes did. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, That's you would be great. I know. Congrats on that. I heard about yeah. that. Yeah. You know? um, Will you uh, not be surprised when I hit you with a text when you come through town next year? Um, I'm going to come uh, rush the stage with my um, uh, uh, Speedo uh, flag outfit. Um, so it was and you. I would love you. for you it to was come. Me, I would yeah. love for you to come. I would love for you to come and introduce a song. Um, Ooh, that yes. would be fun. That okay. would be so great. You, know, you could sing a song. You could play the drums. You could uh, play you guitar. Don't, I don't even sing in the shower. There, you don't want that. Um, uh, but I thank you so, 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 so much for this hour, buddy. Um, yeah, Jared, it's I, so I hate great that it's got to be a podcast so that we can visit, but I'll take, I'll take what I can get. Um, yeah. and, and good it's luck. It's an absolute honor to be here with you guys. And I'm, I'm really blown away by what, what you've created. It's something so special. It's well, back at so many you. people and, uh, you know, my brother's going to be psyched. I didn't tell him I was doing it this morning. Uh, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Tell him yeah. hi. Yeah. Um, all right, well, enjoy the rest of my your first tour, podcast. Pal. So, yeah. thank you. You crushed it. You crushed it. So you absolutely destroyed it. Apologies yeah. to everyone if I fucked it up, but I, you know, a little bit. <laughs> no, practice. you did not. No, you <laughs> killed yeah. it, man. You killed it. Thanks, thank Jared. You. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here, Jared. Thank, thank you, you, Jared. We love you. We love you. Wow. Look and put this on. There you go. You can do that, or you can slam it. Yeah.
That is, uh, that is, that's Jared Leto. I, I just, I love the guy. He's just yeah. always so smooth and personable, honest, real. Yeah, um, he, I could have talked to him for two more hours. He was, yeah. Okay, he's, we'll, he's, we'll get a number for him and then <laughs> we'll make that happen. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's like, I didn't want to embarrass him with the, with the acting stuff because uh, I, 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 I know that, like, like Joaquin, like, they're both, like, in, for my money, top five actors in the world. For and sure. they just yeah. don't like to talk about how fucking great they are and the roles that they do and the process of it. And uh, probably our listeners don't want to hear about that shit either. You know, the process. And no, but, but you know what? But Dude, he's is... fucking so goddamn good. Yeah. He's, he's so amazing. he's so good, JB. And you're so right. And that is one of those things that those, the great actors all kind of share, which is they don't talk about their process in that yeah. way. Right. They're yeah. not like, hey, I mean, some, and hey, let me show you. They do. It's like a magician. Like I'm not telling you how the fucking trip no. goes. Just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, they're not. They're not looking for. They're like, let the performance speak mm -hmm. for itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and, and, and I'll talk, talk about, to you about my life and stuff. But right. I'm not gonna yeah. kind of walk you through so that you're impressed with my my process. Right. Yeah. right. Pro or process. or you're starting to identify those things you heard him talk about the next time you see the performance instead of like enjoying sort of like yeah. pretending that he's somebody else, which yeah. is all it's about. It's simple. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's well, uh well well he's good. It's it's decided he's really good at what he does. Uh, yeah. And a good and, dude, and by the uh, way what he does and then he has this and then and it's so it's 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 a odd full to, blown rock band. Yeah, you can't call it a sideline. Yeah, no, right? no. It's arguably more successful than his acting career. Potentially, I mean, fifteen million albums and it's been yeah. it's been it's been around for 26 years and they're yeah. they're playing arenas. You know, yeah. like, come on, that's yeah. that's like winning that is, an Oscar every year. Yeah, I mean, it, it, th that works so hard. He he works harder than 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 you. Obviously, Sean right now working on a buy. Because yeah, I see him. Yeah, yeah. He's no, just, I was like, just gonna just say on, no. On I, I was looking at, at like, what, what, fucking watching no, your face is embarrassing. No, no, no. I was gonna look at what he won the Oscar for because I know he won an Oscar for. And what was the name of the movie? What was it called? You tell us. It's Dallas. Buyers Beautiful. Club. Uh, bye. Beautiful shine. Bye. <laughs> bye. I can see you, but sorry, bye. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smart. Less.